Morning makers. Um, it occurred to me that while I don't upload a lot of videos every day or regularly, that doesn't mean I'm not doing anything here. So what I've decided to do is kind of like record a maker's vlog, record my process of what I do during the day, my failures, my successes, what I plan to do, how I plan my videos, um, all the projects I'm currently working on. Now, a few weeks ago, I hinted at um, uh, you asking me questions on Twitter with hashtag AskTheNoob. And today I'm going to take that opportunity to have a coffee, sit down with you guys, and we'll answer all those questions for you. So we'll sit out here outside. It's nice and sunny. It's nice and warm today. Nice view. So what better way to ask the questions? So the first question is from Jimmy Charles Tidbits. And he asks, of all of your printers, which one is your bulletproof go-to printer when you need something printed right the first time every time it all depends on the material i'm using it all depends on the size of the print if it's something really small i um tend to go either for the prusa i3 mark ii or mark iii if it's something in abs i'm always most likely going to go for the sigma r17 graphite asks have you tested prusa mark iii for max speed uh no i haven't matthew asks where's malta it's just there all of that that's Malta. Actually, Malta is a very, very, very tiny island, middle of the Mediterranean, just beneath Sicily. No, we're not Italian. Beardy Mac Beardface asks, what is the best make of filament in your experience, please, for PLA and PTG? As with 3D printers and filaments, there are hundreds and hundreds upon hundreds of companies out there who make filaments and printers. So I will never, ever, get to try every single one of them. So it would be a bit arrogant for me to say what is the best. Mohsen asks, what will be your advice to a noob who wants to show his noob experience in 3D printing to the world through YouTube, just like you, but he or she does not have a good camera, lighting system, or an audio system. All they have is a smartphone. Start with Instagram, start with a smartphone. Just print a stand and record through a smartphone. The better the image quality, the better the audio, it's more engaging. However, you do have to start somewhere. So look at Chuck Hollaback. He does everything through an iPad. So there's, you know, smartphone works. Mark Whedon, by the way, creator of Velocity Painting asks, presumably you still have a day job. How do you survive without sleep? <laughs> I, I, do kind of have a few day jobs. I run my 3D printing business. I do some part-time consultancy. Usually I go to sleep about one or 2 a.m. So I, I do get my four to six hours of sleep every day, um, which are very important to me. Gordon asks, honestly, what print spray do you go for with Prusa-like machines if you want to have good looking results? At what speed quality is decreasing? Many people claim they can print as far as beyond 100 millimeters per second and still get awesome results. I doubt that. Personally, for me, I rarely, rarely, rarely ever go past 60 millimeters a second. I think 50 millimeters for me is the sweet spot on the majority of my machines. Um, uh, but like the t Little Monster, I can get decent results at about 70 or 80 millimeters a second uh, with the CR-10S 70 to 80 millimeters a second. But I still tend to print around 50 or 60 millimeters a second. Poker Nerd Space asks, why is the RAM gone? You drank it. Now, a lot of you ask me about my 3D printing farm, and this is basically it. It's not exactly a 3D printing farm, but it's a stack of printers that are usually printing. At the moment, slightly quiet, so I, well, first of all, you can hear me talk. Secondly, some of them are having a bit of downtime. So down here we have the JG Aurora A5, uh, currently finishing up a review. It's printing the last part from a diorama I'm doing of uh, Donatello from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It looks absolutely insane in vertigray and I will show it to you um, in just a bit. This right here is the East 3D Gecko 3D printer. It's another printer I'm reviewing. I've assembled it, did a test print, but it, it goes here to wait for a little bit until I finish my kind of like my queue of printers to review. This is looking to be an incredibly awesome printer. It is extremely quiet. It has linear rails on uh, the X and Y axes. It has belt driven Z axis and it's, it's a Core XY clone Titan extruder, TMC 2100 driver. So it's extremely quiet. And the interesting part is that it's the head platform or it's 
the core XY configuration that actually moves up while the bed stays level. Um, so I'm very, very, very excited to actually start reviewing that. Down here, um, I have the uh, Felix Tech 4, which I will finalize the review because I've just installed the uh, dual uh, nozzle on there. Next to it, down here, is the Palette Plus. And it's been so long that I've had the Palette Plus and I've wanted to do a review for so long. The problem is that whenever I start finishing the process of a review, uh, Mosaic Manufacturing, just update it, um, put more software features on, and it becomes incredibly awesome even more, so I have to test those features out. However, expect a review very shortly, because at this point, I know that I'll never get a review out. Mosaic Manufacturing are constantly, constantly updating this machine, and if I had to wait for the final product, it's just not going to happen. So, I've had a few test prints done. Um, well, more than I've already done, but just to explain certain processes. So expect a review soon. These are my stack of Prusas. I do have there, you can see them there, more Prusas. Uh, but currently, as you can see, I have no space and I'm waiting for my new place to be built uh, where I'll have much more space and I can do much bigger project. Currently, I'm kind of restricted. Here we have the Peo Poly Moai. I'm also printing a project at the moment because this is going to go out for review very soon. This is my ABS Beast. This is the Sigma R17. It currently has some parts in there and that is for the Folger Tech FT5. A lot of you have been asking about it uh, because it sits behind me when I record videos in the office. I just have to fix the idlers. That's all it needs for me to start printing properly with it because what happens is that one of the belts on the idlers um, just comes off, constantly comes off when it has the stock idler. So I just needed to print an upgrade. Down here we have the TiVo Michelangelo and this has been printing quite a lot. I'm actually very impressed with it. I, uh, I'm, I'm kind of finishing up the review and it's a PLA only machine. It doesn't require that much work. It just requires a bit of imagination as to what I'm going to print. Um, but I had a few ideas. As you can see, the box here is full with failures and successes. I keep everything so I can show you guys what goes well, what doesn't. And along the day, I will record anything I do that possibly succeeds or fails so you guys get to have an idea of what I go through. So we are now sitting in my office or where you guys see me record and it's not as pretty as it would be when I'm recording because it's not clean. This is the only space I have to work in. So it's an absolute mess in here, um, but I'm working on quite a lot of projects at the same time. And uh, yeah, this is the best for way for me to show you guys what it's like behind the scenes. So this is the other side. That's where you guys look at me from. And this is my disc. And as you can see, it's a mess. I have lots and lots and lots of filaments just running around there. Um, I have the uh, Cheshire Ket. This is what I'm printing with the um, um, TiVo Michelangelo. I have almost all the parts ready. I just need a few more purple parts and that's done. This, this is the insane model by Sanex. It looks absolutely incredible there fortunately you can't see it because uh, there's lights behind it but take my word for it it is absolutely incredible um what else i have some sla parts which i'm printing with the uh moai um this is going to be harlequin i printed this in whole um as in it's not empty from the inside so there's quite a bit of weight to it and i'm really happy with that because it turned out great and it feels um it feels quite solid so i'm gonna need to clean that up and put it together let's see from there so what's what's gonna happen for me today is try to finish up the um jg aurora a5 review i still have to print my test pieces the make test because that's kind of like my benchmark to see what a printer is capable of um i'm not gonna print any benches i don't think i want to print any benches anymore um i have more than enough and i know it bugs quite a lot of you guys but yeah apart from that finish up the harlequin as well maybe print a couple of test models i'm also testing out um this guy here this is the fl sun s it's a uh, resin 3d printer but it's you know, uv light based it prints really nice. I actually, I have a part here, which I managed to print yesterday. This is a model by Chaos Cortec. Um, unfortunately, you're not going to see it very, oh, there you go. It looks really awesome. Um, 
I only realized how to slice things yesterday with it. Oh, up, up until that point, all I was doing was printing things that came off the SD card. And it took me quite a few days because it's quite a complicated slicer. This is also printed on the FL Sun S, which looks once again, ridiculously insane. The detail is incredibly awesome. As for whether I would take it um, instead of the Moai, seeing as the Moai is, well, it's not cheap, but it's not ridiculously expensive. Um, I still wouldn't trade it for a proper SLA like the Moai. It's, it's still a very good SLA printer. Don't get me wrong, very good SLA printer, but it kind of restricted and I'm trying to print with the resins of the Moai and unfortunately I can't at the moment. So I still have to tweak those settings. As for everything else, hold on, cause I haven't put it together yet. I'm still test fitting everything, but look at that. Look at that, that is just, it's ridiculous. There, and they're absolutely awesome. The prints that I was showing you before of the uh, Tivo Michelangelo, they're coming out insanely great. They're coming out insanely great. Um, the Tivo Michelangelo is very happy printing Polyalchemy Elixir. It's turning out really good. The print quality is actually quite nice. It, I mean, there is, it, it's not perfect, but it's almost there. It's almost perfect. And that didn't require a lot of settings, to be honest. So I'm quite happy with that. Um, apart from that, as I said, I still have to print some SLA pieces, more prints from this diorama. It's printing the last piece, and then I'll do the make test. Some more prints on the FL Sun Q. Once the Cheshire Cat is ready on the TiVo Michelangelo, I'll probably print Michelangelo on the Michelangelo. Seems makes sense to me. <laughs> Once that's done, I need to get the FL Sun QQ, which is the Delta 3D printer I have here, sitting right here. Um, take it out there so I can constantly print because I cannot have it in here because if I record, um, then, then you can possibly hear it and it becomes annoying. And then I need to get the parts that I printed on the Sigma to fix this. I get a lot of people asking me about this printer. This is my Folger Tech FT5. Now, the frame is standard. Electronics, it's running on a Duet Wi-Fi with, I think that's a 4.5 inch uh, touchscreen. It has an E3D Type Nero extruder. It is also running a BL Touch. And that's, that's all the modifications I've done so far. Eventually, I don't know where this is gonna end up, but I would like to kind of fix it up a bit more, change all the corners, 3D print everything in order to have it fully enclosed. I'll change it to a 24 volt system. I'll put a silicone uh, heat bed in order to have it a bit more efficient. I've done a few test prints with this, not too many because I'm still calibrating it, uh, but it's looking to be extremely quiet, which I'm very happy about. Extremely, well, hopefully it will be extremely reliable. And the fact that it has a do it Wi-Fi, oh, do it Wi-Fi, awesome thing to have, but it, it you have to relearn everything like you literally relearn everything that you know about 3d printers because it doesn't work it's kind of like a firmware based on g-code and it can be a bit complicated but then again on the other end of the spectrum it actually is much easier so than a standard maryland firmware so you just have to relearn a few things so i have the first hiccup of the day um I'm, i as i said i'm doing the review of the tivo michelangelo and I'm printing in Polyalchemy Elixir and I'm doing the Cheshire Cat and it's in pink. And I think the other one is Nightshade. It's like a really gorgeous purple. The problem is that I am almost out and I still have probably about five or six large pieces to go. So I'm it's definitely not gonna manage. So I'm gonna to need to go online, check with Polyalchemy and check with Ben at Hawk 3D Proto to see who can get me a spool here the quickest. I do have a spool in 2.85 millimeter for the Sigma, but obviously this is the TiVo Michelangelo. It takes 1.75, so yeah, it's gonna to have to wait a bit. And in the meantime, I'll start printing something else. So second stall of the day, the, um, the FT5 uh, has once again has to go on pause. And this is the issue with the FT5. I, constantly need some parts seeing as i've done an almost full custom except for the frame i wanted to do some tweaks which means that 3d printed parts and extra spares and different pulleys and i i want this machine to be an absolute beast so i'm gonna have to slow down a bit 
I have gone online to order some uh, some parts. Um, these are the 3D printed parts that I did. They take two bearings. They are the idlers for the Y axes. They should have a smooth rod inside. Um, I used a, uh, a threaded rod, which is still eight millimeters and that's fine. And these just go on the Y axes. So hopefully the belt stops basically jumping out the idler. As for me, I think that kind of gives you an idea. I am doing something every day. I get failures every day. I get successes every day. And when I say every day, I spend, I think around eight to 10 hours in this very room, either here or next to this room, at the uh, where the printers are. If I'm tweaking and printing and adjusting and, and, and failing and swearing at something, I thought to myself that maybe if you guys like this, if you guys like to know what a maker's day is like, I could try this out for a week. Let me know. I could upload these maybe daily, except for the days where I record something, um, where I record an official episode on the channel. I could have that in the background so you can just get, get a bit of a preview of what's coming. Um, but let me know. I This is easy for me because it takes much less preparation and it feels much more natural to me. I'm just doing what I usually do and just explaining to you guys. So let me know. I could... I could very well do this or we could do a trial period. We'll do it for a week, every day for a week. Um, it'll be a nice challenge for me as well. So let me know, do you guys like vlogging? A maker's vlog, a day in a maker's life. Let me know, uh, leave your comments in the section below, share, subscribe, and as always, happy making guys.